32 players, over $6,000 in prize money. This is High Roller Draft League Season 5. This league features some of the top players and most creative minds in BGC, and each week's match is a $25 bet match, on top of the big prize payouts in the playoffs. I've top cut three of the previous four seasons, and this time, I've assembled an all-star dream team to try and take it all. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel where today we are going to be playing our penultimate match in the regular season of High Roller Draft League Season 5. We're facing off against Night Guard in week number 7, and uh, it's interesting because Night Guard's been in this league for a while, he's a veteran of the High Roller Draft League, but I've never actually played him, even though I'm also a longtime veteran of the Draft League, so it's going to be really interesting to see how we match up, and he's got a really cool team, I really like what he's drafted here, uh, he has drafted a sort of core offensive group of Metagross, Latias, Riolu, and Thunderous Incarnate. And then he has a really interesting supporting cast as well. So I mentioned this offensive group because he has the option to use coaching with Prankster Riolu on either Clear Body Metagross or Defiant Thunderous, both of which can't really be intimidated. But then Thunderous is also a really fast Pokemon that gets access to Brutal Swing. So he can get a weakness policy activating move on something like a Metagross or a Latias that ignores uh, redirection, which is really, really cool. You can also kind of use that on like a weak armor Poltegeist, but it's probably a little less likely, especially with the team that I have. On top of that, he has some really, really neat supportive options. He's got an Intimidator with Scrafty. He's got Morgrim, which is basically just a Grimmsnarl that dies faster. Uh, he's got Gengar and Sock is in there as well. Don't really know why. And Regidrago. Regidrago's a neat one. I've had Regidrago before, and I never really find that many opportunities to bring it. But it does threaten things like Scarf or Specs, um, Dragon Energy, which can be really, really scary. I'm not really expecting to see it this week, though. The six that we are expecting to see are Metagross, uh, Latias, Scrafty, Riolu, Thunderous, and um, honestly, like, plus one probably in DD. I feel like in DD, if he respects Justified, is going to be uh, something to do. And now, Justified is an option I have with my Arcanine. Uh, I've had Arcanine in, I think, four seasons of High Roller Draft League. I have literally never run Justified because I think Justified on Arcanine is bad and dumb. But it is something that has to be respected in team building. However, I'm running Justified Arcanine for the first time in four seasons of having an Arcanine. It's finally time. Everyone always hypes this thing up. They're like, oh, yeah, you can, you can get a plus four. But its speed tier is too slow to be great with it, and it also doesn't do quite enough damage against most teams. Um, so it, it's not great. But this week, everything just kind of comes together to create a perfect situation for Life Orb Justified Arcanine. Now, you might think, okay, but he has an Ndidi, which will prevent that from working. Yes, but his team is so focused on getting aggressive momentum that if he leads in DD, I feel kind of fine anyway. I just won't go for the beat up and I'll just go for something else. Like, you know, I can uh, max darkness into the Ndidi with Crunch or I can just, you know, switch out Will-O-Wisp, the partner. Like, I can do a lot of different things. Uh, the Arcanine is running Will-O-Wisp as well as being justified, which is pretty cool. But most of this matchup is going to be decided by my Arcanine. Is it able to make the difference? The rest of the team is here to support Arcanine. We have Hydreigon. It is Choice Scarfed to make sure that it outspeeds Choice Scarfed Reggie Drago in case that comes. Uh, it also outspeeds Latias. I just don't want it dying before I can get the beat up off. Um, it also has access to Snarl, which is a pretty nice thing to have. Uh, Togetic's here to keep the, beaten, the beaten up Arcanine alive. Uh, Landorus is here. Mostly because, honestly, those three were the only Pokemon that I really liked into this matchup. It's kind of similar to the Carne Asada matchup in that regard. Like, I have a core offensive three that I think is really good. And then I kind of feel like the rest of my team is really bad into his team. But we do have uh, the option for a Crobat Tailwind. Uh, I did bring that. Uh, we've got Landorus Therian running an Adrenaline Orb just because why not, uh, honestly. Uh, we have Kartana, which has a White Herb. So if you're running an offensive Lando, it's usually going to be either Life Orb or White Herb. Uh, both of those are taken, so I figured, why not? We'll put an Adrenaline Orb on the bad boy if he intimidates it. Hey, I'm faster now. That's kind of cool. But uh, that's it for this uh, sort of preview. I'm really excited to see how this one goes. If I win, I might be able to clinch a spot in the top 16, but I don't think it's mathematically guaranteed yet because, honestly, our division is just insanely close. And uh, we'll see how this goes. It's going to be exciting. I'll see you guys in the match. Okay. Week number seven. I don't want to see Ndidi, but he really should bring Ndidi. If he doesn't bring Ndidi, the man's throwing. Is he ready for Adrenaline Orb Landorus, though? Is anybody ever ready for Adrenaline Orb Landorus? I see Ndidi, okay. This is exactly the six I expected. 
All right, I think we just lead these lads this time around. And if he leads in DD, I think I don't really care that much. The adrenaline orb is useless now, which is kind of kind of unfortunate. I don't love this matchup. If he leads Didi though, like the the thought process is if he leads in Didi, like I feel like it slows down his mode too much. Perfect. Yeah, GG. Cool. Okay. Here comes the Dynamax. So he's gonna coaching this thing. I don't think it can one hit me. It shouldn't be able to with plus one. Let's say like Adamant Life Orb. I don't think it can one hit me. Like any, I don't think it can get anywhere close to one hitting me. I'm gonna do a decent amount of damage to myself, which does kind of suck. But like I should be able to kill this through plus one defense pretty easily. But if he max guards, his best play here is to max guard and coaching and then coaching again. Rain dance. Oh! Okay! Cute! So he will survive. That's the real question. Ooh, that's not a two-hit KO. I think that's kind of fine. Oh, I have Life Orb Recoil, though. Is he Life Orb? If he's Life Orb, I think I might even be able to kill him with Beat Up next turn. No Life Orb, okay. Oh, that's a crit! Oh, that has to be a crit. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh that's unfortunate. Oh, that's really sad. The Rain Dance was such a good play, too. Oh, man. We got some positive RNG in the house already. Woof. All right, um, I did take a lot of damage there though. I do outspeed most of this team, but like Latias might be able to take me out. Reggie Drago can definitely take me out. Uh, that's gonna have dragon energy probably. And it's gonna be Scarf, I think, for sure. What do I have in the back here? I have my, uh, my Crobat in the back. Now, I am scarfed with my Hydreigon, which is a problem. But I'm gonna go for damage on the Reggie Drago here. Be able to go away. It's fine. Is it Latias? It's DD. Okay. I think it's fine. Uh. You really all in on this, though. So Sash is on the is on the Riolu for sure. I should be faster than him because I'm also Scarf. So we'll do. Oh my God, that does nothing. We'll do some damage to this thing. out. Okay, this is actually kind of scary. I think I have to double protect the Arcanine here because I'm 100% sure that's Scarfed. So I double protect the Arcanine. Tailwind. And then I can kind of go. But I think I need the double protect here. No, nah, GG. Oh man, even with the crit, he just got me. He got me really good. What? Oh, I threw! I threw! No! I live that? 
Oh my god, dude. I'm so bad at this video game. Oh my god. All I had to do was click Max, Max Starfall and I win. Oh no. No, what? How the hell do I live that? Well, Rock Slide flinches on my way out now. I can't believe I lived that. I'm so upset that I lived that. Now I don't even get the guarantee or the confirmation. Wait. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. I feel so dumb. I feel so stupid. Oh my god, dude. God, Reggie Drago's damage output is so bad. That's actually insane that that didn't kill. Yeah, it's definitely Scarf. A hundred percent. I need a flinch on the Ndidi here. This is no longer winnable. I don't want to give any more info. Oh, I threw, man. If I just clicked Starfall, I win. Oh. Because then what happens, right, is I KO the Reggie Drago. The Psychic Terrain goes away. Ndidi still picks up the KO on the Crobat because it's what single target. But then it's just Ndidi Riolu versus my Landorus. And I can just win because there's no terrain. I can go Swords Dance, Earthquake, and I win the game. I'm pretty sure. Oh my god, that was so bad. I think I can just do this again, though, honestly. I don't really know what he does into this. I think this is still the right call. Because it does force respect. Uh, I need the Crobat. Um, I think I need Togetic, actually. Because then I can protect the Arcanine. Kinda. Does he go Reggie Drago as a lead here? I kind of think the same four is actually a decent play. But actually, I'm going to bring Togetic in the back because I think Togetic is a better late game cleaner, which sounds super weird. But if he's choiced into a dragon move on Reggie Drago, and like Riolu can't hurt it, like Ndidi's not going to do much either. Like, I feel like Togetic's actually an, in, a decent late game cleaner, which is kind of hilarious. Oh, that was so bad, though. Fundy Riolu. Okay, that's fine. He was not Life Orb, so I kind of think that he is, um... I kind of think that he is, uh... Whatchamacallit? AB. I have to max the Arcanine here, there's no other option. So we're gonna go for the Starfall here into the, into the Thundee this time. Depending on how the, if he uses Coaching, he might live. But if he uses Rain Dance again, he dies. Cause the only reason he lost last game, or the only reason he lost the Thundee was on a crit. So it would not be too surprising for me if he clicked Rain Dance again. If he clicks Rain Dance, I think I win the game because the Fairy Terrain also weakens Dragon type moves, and I have Togetic in the back this time. This is a bit of a 50-50 though, because it's also possible that he um, that he clicks Coaching this time. But I'm still doing an insane amount of damage if he coaches. Rain dance, rain dance, rain dance. Nice! So he should die. Uh, I'll take 50% again. I lose. What the hell is this? 
What? Oh no, it doesn't kill me. We're fine. <laughs> so it has Weather Ball. Um, Alright, interesting. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't expect Weather Ball to be, in a, be an option for him here. Now, here's the thing, right? Dragon Energy is very scary. Oh, uh, because he can switch in, like, even with Terrain, I think I die now. Um, especially if he switches the Indeedee in and gets rid of the Terrain. Uh, Reggie Drago comes in. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna do this. We're just gonna do this. I'm gonna retain my Hydreigon. I'm gonna go into Togetic. We're gonna be safe against Dragon Energy. And if it's Riolu, Indeedee, Reggie Drago, my Togetic should be able to 1v3 from here. Which sounds really funny, but it should be true. So here's the awkward thing going into game three. Like, I could switch it up and go, like, Togetic plus Landorus lead in game two or in game three and go Swords Dance, but if he gets double coaching. He negates the Swords Dance and is doing a ton of damage. I'm going to keep the Arcanine in right now. Just in case he lets it live. Because at this point it's done its job. Man, Weatherball, sneaky. Really, really good play, honestly. Like, that's a really, really nice bit of tech that he, that he brought out for this match. So, single target. This is going to do quite a lot of Togetic, but it's still a Togetic, so... And now I bring my Hydreigon back in, and I think I begin Snarling. And Dragon Energy will also be weaker. Okay, that is more than I would have expected. But still, we're going to chip the, the Reggie Drago pretty substantially. And now we're going to bring the Hydreigon in here. And with that little HP, plus a Snarl, plus the damage, I don't think Dragon Energy can kill me. And also the double up might kill because... Uh, Snarl's honestly not that bad damage. I'm Scarfed, so I'm modest. Um, I'm Scarfed with my Hydreigon with enough speed to outspeed his Scarfed... Um, Reggie Drago by one. Pretty important that I don't miss this Snarl, but I think I might still be able to win even without it. But, uh, you know, hitting the Ndidi is actually arguably more important. It's really important that I hit both. Like, he can switch in the, uh, Riolu if he wants, but that's gonna take a Snarl and then a super effective Dazzle, so... Yeah, like, this is fine. I'm using two spread moves. Oh my god, yeah, that's tons of damage to the Reggie Drago. Oh, that's actually a crit. I don't think that really matters because he's, he already would have been at like 40% ish with minus one. He's not killing me. So, what does he. What's his gut? Like, Thundy Riolu. Here's the awkward thing, right? Like, he doesn't want to lead Thundy Riolu into me again, I don't think, because it's just not working. Unless he switches up, like, the Ndidi. Like, he can switch the Ndidi into something else. Um, you could switch the Indeedee into something else. Because he's doing a lot of damage to my Arcanine, right? Like, that's the thing. He's dishing out sizable damage to my Arcanine. And if he goes for plus one, he's going to almost kill me. He will die to the Max Flare... But then, like, we're still in this awkward situation where it's reliant on the Mons in the back, which is a little coin flippy, and I'd rather avoid that if I can. So here's the thing. If he leads something else, and I switch my lead up, I'm kind of fucked. Like, that's the problem here. Does he have confidence in the Thundy Riolu lead? If I go Arcanine Togetic, what does that look like for me? I think that works. I think Arcanine Togetic works for me. 
But if he leads, like, indeedy Metagross, that gets really awkward. But I think this works. Because I can Wisp the Thundee and then bring a different Dynamaxer. Which would probably want to be the Landorus. Oh, I don't do, any do anything into the Latias, though. Like, Kartana is pretty okay into this. But, like, it gets outsped by the Dragon, which I don't like. But I could go, like, Scarf High Dragon and Kartana? I think it's High Dragon Lando in the back. I think this is what... This is a weird matchup, man. I'm not a fan of this matchup at all. It's ironic that his card has the Arcanine on it. <laughs> Thundi Regidrago, interesting. I think this is okay for me. Like, I think I can just max and play rough, right? Because then Togetic will take the Thundee hits. Air Screams, I live. The Lightnings, I can beat myself up. If I die to Dragon Energy, that's my own fault, but I'm pretty sure. Okay, this is exactly what I was about to say. I think he's switching. Okay. It, yeah, I max the Arcanine here, and I click Play Rough into, like, everything. A weird decision to bring Latias in the back here. Uh, I need to hit this. If he's Lum, I'm in trouble, but I think he's AV. Like, AV makes the most sense to me here, based on what we've seen. Togetic might live this as well, because he's not Life Orb. I'm pretty sure Togetic lives this, even if he Lightnings. It should be guaranteed. Oh yeah, he easily lives that. Okay. Not gonna live a Lightning after that, but he should live a Lightning if the Wisp hits. 85. 85%. Please. No Lum. No Lum. Okay, okay, now we max, we max, um, we max Starfall here for sure on the Latias, uh, and I think, do we just continue to follow me on the Togetic? Because if he, if he uses, like, Tailwind, I don't think I really care. Yeah, I think we just continue clicking follow me on the Togetic. I think we got this. Now, this is, a, I knew this was going to be a good thing to bring. You never want to not have Wisp into, like, really offensive threats like Thundee and Metagross, but if you're planning on Dynamaxing something... My whole thing about Dynamaxing Pokemon is, like, if you have a Pokemon that is designed to be a Dynamaxer, but you also want Protect on it, just run something that's a status move that's not Protect. Because if it's Dynamaxing anyway, it becomes Max Guard. So, like, I love having, like, no Protect, but, like, the third, the fourth move will be, like, Will-O-Wisp, right? So, like, that's Protect. I've been using Max Guard. It gets the job done. But it gives you that extra option. It's basically like having five moves, which is kind of sick. Uh, now the Arcanine goes big. There really should be no way for the Latias to survive here. I, I would assume it's using Tailwind or some such. Um, but uh, I don't really understand why it's here. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Airstream goes in. That's fine. Like, you're not doing any damage. Togetic is going to survive a double up very easily. Uh, I mean, if it's like Specs, maybe it, maybe it doesn't. I don't know, this is weird. Why would you switch up to Latias? Ice Beam? Okay, I mean, maybe if it's Life Orb, maybe I die. No, Togetic's pretty good, dude. <laughs> if it was Life Orb, I would have died. Or at least it would have been a roll. In fairness. So now, the next thing that will move is going to be the, um, the Thundee. I have Terrain up, so if he brings the Reggie Drago back in, I don't actually care. It's in DD, and he needs to get rid of the Terrain. But you want to see something funny? 
<laughs> Ooh, I can't really use Max Darkness because it'll give it a boost. Mmm. That isn't fantastic. But if he's like Max... Hold on, let's see. I feel like maybe I can get it with Helping Hand? Like Helping Hand Flare? I feel like that gets it, right? Darkness, okay. I love that decision. I really like that decision, but I don't think it's enough. Like, I think Ark will still live. Oh, plus it gives me a Justified Boost. Oh, that Ndidi is super dead. Super duper ultra dead. Alright, so theoretically, the maximum amount of damage that Dragon Energy could do to me is... If, if he's if he's modest, it's a 50-50, basically. If he's timid, he can't kill me. Oh, but if he does damage with his Thundee onto my Togetic, then it's a single target, and then I will die. But Hydreigon and Lando in the back should win this, because I outspeed him, I just need to hit my Draco Meteor. But I think what we do here is we Starfall into the Reggie Drago and we protect to make sure that it's not single target damage. If he doubles into the Arcanine, he should pick up the Arcanine. But if he's, if he's greedy and he goes into my Togetic here, then I might be able to survive and win the game outright. Oh, let's go. Okay, now there's at worst a 50 50 that I die here. At worst. If he's modest. If he's timid, I live. Let's go! Okay, Justified Arcanine legitimately kicking some absolute butt here. That's it, that's the game. A nice bounce back. I threw game one so badly. <laughs> so to win the set after that feels very, very good. Uh, the Arcanine going down here is fine. Uh, everything is fine. <sighs> All right, um, I think we just go Draco Meteor here. Um, helping Hand Draco Meteor should pick up the Thundee, even if it's AB, I think. Or actually, I Dark Pulse. Ah, uh, he's really fast. But yeah, I think we just Dark Pulse. It's fine. I don't want to risk misses. Dragon. That's the that's the game. 2-1. Nice. I'm not surprised to see Brutal Swing on this thing. Uh, it's definitely AV. Uh, we've seen three moves, but no electric move. And I have Lapras. Like, he's definitely... I don't have it with me, but, like, Lapras is on my team. He definitely has Max Lightning. Okay, that does it for week seven. We clutched the victory there. While that that was an experience, is the best way that I can describe that match. Uh, the game one, really just uh, me not knowing my calcs there. I, I knew for a fact that it was Scarf Reggie Drago. Like, I mean, not for a fact, but I, I inferred it from everything that was going on. And I just thought my Arcanine would die. I did not need to go for that Max Guard there. I just didn't have to. But, um... A big throw in game number one, but we clutch it out nonetheless. Uh, even though I got that hella insane crit in game number one, we still managed to uh, clutch it out regardless of the throw. And uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I don't have the other results. I'm playing pretty early this week, so I'm not sure if that clinches top 16 for us or not. But uh, regardless, I'm feeling very, very good after that win. Um, I didn't feel super comfy in the matchup. 
we got five of the six Pokemon right in our sort of predictions, uh, which is always nice. Uh, but I, I feel like in this matchup, it was kind of a bit of a given on both sides what we were kind of going to bring. I was talking a little bit with Night Guard after the fact as well, and he did respect the Justified. He just didn't expect Life Orb. He expected me to have something like Assault Vest plus Justified. He didn't expect just the sheer raw power of Life Orb Arcanine, which is what kind of made the difference there, uh, especially in game number two when I was able to just delete the Thunderous with Max Starfall. I thought he put together a really cool team. Uh, I thought using, uh, utilizing Weather Ball on Thunderous was really cool. He apparently had Sunny Day and Rain Dance on the Riolu. So he, it was, it was there as both an Arcanine counter and as a Kartana counter, which is really, really cool. I think, honestly, Night Guard, um, I, I've never played against him, and I honestly haven't followed his, his runs in High Roller very much in the past. So I had very little, uh, like to, ex I, I wasn't sure what to expect, uh, as far as, like, the level of play he would bring, the level of prep he would bring. But honestly, really impressed. I thought he did really, really well. Um, and th there were a million different ways that that match could have gone the other way. So uh, really a bit of luck on our side for sure. Uh, we did get a crit snarl in game number two. Of course, the game one crit, which ended up ultimately not mattering because I lost. But uh, still, we, we did get a fair amount of good RNG on our side. And Night Guard still almost took it down. So really, really big shout outs to Night Guard for this week. But next week, um, I'm going to... Do my best to uh, to figure out exactly how to handle this because um, I might play Tom in London during Worlds. I will bring my laptop and my portable uh, my portable capture card, I think, but I'm not really sure how this is gonna work out. Um, obviously, it's the last week, so I will provide some footage. But I think the the ideal thing is that I get an extension and I can play him when we get home. But uh, we'll figure out exactly what happens with that. Regardless. I'm excited to be getting into the last uh, sort of stretch of the regular season. I'm excited to hopefully get into yet another playoffs and see if we can make it farther than we ever have before. I'm still super happy with the team that we have, even though we've taken a couple of hard losses that I'm uh, not super thrilled about. Uh, still, I think we're doing pretty well, and I'm very, very happy to be uh, in the position that we're in right now. So... Definitely, if you guys have enjoyed the High Roller Draft League videos, uh, there's a playlist. Check out the playlist if you haven't seen the other ones. Uh, it's, it's all right there for you to watch through weeks ones, uh, 1 through 7. There is no week 5. You'll, you'll hear about that in week 6. You didn't miss anything. It just didn't happen. Uh, but yeah, if you guys have enjoyed the content, leave a like. Of course, subscribe. Ring the bell to know when that week 8 match goes live. And of course... Uh, follow me on Twitch. It's the best way to keep in, uh, to sort of keep the most updated because there's a bit of a delay in between when the matches actually go out on YouTube. And uh, yeah, you know, it's been it's been great to have you all along for the ride here of this season of High Roller Draft League, and I'm really excited to close it out, hopefully strong. And I'll see you guys next time.